What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm going to talk about Paul Heyman talking about the shoot promo he did on Vince McMahon. This was right around the time of the Alliance versus WWF story angle, and uh, it was right before Survivor Series uh, of that year where uh, Vince kind of let Paul Heyman do like a, a shoot promo on him, like, kind of let he let him say how he felt and vince didn't say anything or whatnot so we're gonna talk about that and and the brilliance behind that whole situation um since we just found out that paul Heyman is the first inductee of the 2024 uh wwe hall of fame class which you know it makes sense wrestlemania is going to be in philly this year uh he deserves to be in the hall of fame class um or just in hall of fame wwe hall of fame period because the guy he is very brilliant when it comes to wrestling and and how wrestling should be and and just his delivery on setting up matches and promos over the years have been just top tier paul Heyman can definitely sell you into a match he can he can get you to buy into a match and and more or less it's kind of the same here even though people wanted to see wwf versus the lions they have been building it up he definitely was a pivotal part as well in getting people to buy into it even more like there's some there's some realism here so classic classic promo segment from him if you haven't seen this it's on youtube go check it out paul Heyman shoots on vince and the fact that vince just kind of let him do that because he knew Paul Heyman's talent is is just a testament to how good Paul Heyman really is when it comes to just the wrestling mindset and how to get people in the building. So we're going to check this out. Let's get right into it, man. I went up to Vince halfway through the day and I said, do you even want to know what I'm, you know, some of the shit I want to say to you? And he went, no, draw me money. You know, about right. <laughs> Okay, are you gonna say anything back to me? No, just draw me money. Sounds just about right. One of the first things you did when you got to WWF, um, apart from commentate with Jim Ross, was when the invasion storyline was happening and ECW became a part of that. And it lasted about, what, five months, something like that. Um, how did you feel as someone who had like we talked about before, so much time with ECW, you're now in WWF, and they're bringing the name of ECW back to do this storyline, and it culminates in Survivor Series where the alliance is taken away, but a few days before that show, you did that promo on SmackDown on Vince McMahon. It was like 11 minutes long. Uh, I think people remember it. Um, where you said things like, you know, you, you took Hulk Hogan's blood and created Titan Tower, whatever it was. Um, it felt like that was almost like a culmination for you to, to, to get vent that and get that all out in some way. Is that, would that be accurate? For those of you who will remember the Monday Night Raw that preceded that promo, they did a vignette on Vince's plane with Mick Foley, where Mick Foley tore into Vince and Vince was just eating fruit and not paying attention to what Mick had to say. Um, and and Mick, Mick laid some pretty heavy shit on Vince, and Vince just blew it off and ignored him, you know, in terms of, well, you know, well, this is the way things are, and I don't give a shit if, what your opinion is. And we were heading to SmackDown, and Michael Hayes, Michael Hayes, the fabulous Freebird, WWE Hall of Famer, I might add, and author of Bad Street USA, Nibes. Um, <laughs> Michael Hayes on the plane looked over at Vince and says, you know, if you really want someone to do a shoot promo on you, Paulie over there rip your asshole. Yay fucking why. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it was, it, the, the Alliance had just been such a unmitigated disaster for all of us involved you know both again I was on the writing team and on camera at the time so on both you know on both ends of my career it's just like oh god I wish this would just end already <laughs> and it was ending and we we're heading towards the conclusion and Vince just looks you know Vince is all on the plane and the funny thing was just like with Mick Foley he was legitimately just sitting there and you know eating fruit or something just goes over and goes 
want to rip me an asshole yay fucking wide <laughs> you know and figuratively <laughs> not literally that definitely sound like vince that, that sounds like vince what what he would say while eating some fruit like you want to do this paulie fuck it rip me in half <laughs> that sounds that's Vince he's like fuck it go ahead whatever <laughs> and you know it had been a while since I had done one of those ECW style shoot promos um and you know my do you want me to rip you an SLA wide as this guy over here found out I'm the guy to do it um you want to want me to shoot I'll shoot okay how far can I go? As much as you can to draw me money. Okay. Yeah. That I can do. <laughs> that I can do. That I can draw you money and right. rip you an asshole yay wide. Let's do it. And we got to SmackDown. And uh, I knew I wanted to invoke the name of a bunch of the promoters that he ran out of business. And I knew I wanted to invoke the name of his father because I knew his father. I worked for his father. I was a teenage photographer. And if you guys remember that promo, man, he, he went in. He, they gave him damn near like 10 minutes to just go in and Vince didn't say a word. He mentioned his father. He mentioned the other wrestling territories that he ran out of business, even though his father had shook their hands and said, we would never compete with you when his father died. Guess what Vince did? Competed with them. So it, he was he was really blending that, that line of what really happened, what was real, and incorporating it into the storyline where as a fan, and I don't think that promo was really truly appreciated until later, in like years later. I think it's been appreciated now, obviously, because of how, you know, just fucking raw it was. But at the time, I don't think it was appreciated as much as it should have. And that's just how it really is a lot of times in life with not even just wrestling, just people in general. It's not appreciated until later on. But, yo, he was going in. That, that used to get paid for my pictures by Vince McMahon's father and so I felt I had the right to invoke his father's name which is a no-no unless you're going to say his name with reverence mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know we had done the angle where I turned Vince's children and we've done it a hundred thousand times since but this was this was I turned both of them on Vince at the same time mm -hmm. you know where Stephanie comes out on TV and goes I just want my father to die <laughs> you know you know <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and okay so you know we're going with the death of the father from at the behest of the daughter you know with with the endorsement of the son and uh and i i said okay you know let's see how far i can take this and the only thing that stuck in my head was sports entertainment versus wrestling sports entertainment versus wrestling that if i can just get that hook in people will really go fucking Heyman is shooting on Vince McMahon mm -hmm. and so I, I came up with the line you made wrestling a, a, a dirty word didn't you Vince and, and, and I went wow that's that's the core and as long as I can build this promo around that core I have no idea what I'm going to say out there but I know that's the message I want to send that ECW and you know obviously I mean, the alliance represents <laughs> wrestling and you 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 scumbag, barrel-chested Irish fuck. You represent sports entertainment. You want superstars. We want wrestlers, you know? And then and that's the core of it. So to his credit, I'll give him a ton of credit. I went up to Vince halfway through the day, and I said, do you even want to know what I'm, you know, some of the shit I want to say to you? And he went, no, nope. draw me money. You know? I'm all right. <laughs> okay. Are you going to say anything back to me? No. <laughs> Just draw me money. You know? And, you know, and... Um... And that's the thing about promos like that that I, I, you know, I wish they would do more of is not rehearsing it. Because, to me, I feel like those be the best promos. Like, genuine reactions. Where you just say, fuck it. We know the bullet points. 
We know where we're trying to get to. We kind of have an idea. I'll see you when I get out there. And Vince, to his credit, he didn't want to know. All right. Say what you got to say. Made me some fucking money. That's it. As long as you don't go too crazy. And he was even cursing too. But it worked. It was believable. It worked. I I, I really hope, you know, and I, I want to see more of that. You know, I really want to see more of that um, just in general in wrestling. Like, you know, just letting the wrestlers kind of go out there, say what they have to say, bring it, you know, tie it into the wrestling story at hand that they're trying to tell and go from there, man. I'm all for it. We came up with the idea of Taz choking me out at the end, mm -hmm. you know, because um, Taz was no longer really in the ring and he was sitting at the commentator table and I just looked, you know, and, and I just looked at him at the time as a, this big fat fucking butterball sitting with this, <laughs> sitting with sitting with Michael Cole that used to be the toughest guy in, brother, I'll choke you out. I'm Taz, I'm from Brooklyn, you know? And now he's and now he's just, you know, and the line was, and now you've reduced him to being mm -hmm. just a commentator and not a good yep. one at that. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and then that, I just told Taz, I said, you know, you know the cue, don't you? And he goes, no. I said, oh, you'll know it when I get to you. <laughs> you know. And I said to him, listen, the cameras are going to be tight on us. You know, lay, you know, bring that choke, man. You know, tighten it up. Bring it in. <laughs> oh, God. Did he, bring it? <laughs> he, jumped, he jumped the shit out of me. Um, and God bless him for doing it. So we were in Gorilla, and I was about to go out to cut the promo, and I looked over at Vince, who was eating a protein bar. And, uh, and I said, hey, you sure you don't want to know anything I'm going to say here? Some of this shit's real heavy. Will it draw me money? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It'll get a lot of attention, Vince, that I promise you. It's a go-home show, God damn it. <laughs> Bring it. <It'll> go. <laughs> yes, sir, Captain. <laughs> I'm on my way. And so I went out there, and for however many minutes it was, I, I laid into Vince McMahon in a shoot to... As I recommend anybody that ever wants to do a shoot promo, keep in mind the fact that shooting in and of itself is very Vince Russo. It does not work. No one here wants to just hear me shoot. I can shoot all night long, and you'll sit there and go, eh, this is what the who gives a shit. But if I can turn that shoot into storyline context and then manipulate what you're listening to into making you want to buy a ticket, to where I take that shoot and I make you say, you know, he did make wrestling a dirty word. You know what? He he did make superstars when I want to see wrestlers. He he did do. Fuck him, man. I I'm gonna buy that pay per view because I want those guys to win. Now that shoot draws money. Yeah. He's spot on. When you blur the lines of what's real and what's a work and you incorporate it into a storyline, it makes it so the fan is like, what's going on here? Even when you can fool the hardcore fan into thinking, oh, bro, there's some legitimacy, like some legitimacy here. What's, what's going on? It works. And you make you, when you can't tell the difference, that's when you got people. So if there's anybody that knows anything about that, it would be Paul Heyman, man. So we took this realistic premise, which is known as a shoot, and we, we went as far as we could with the shoot comments, uh -huh. manipulated them into the storyline that we were presenting for that Sunday, yeah. and set forth a segment on SmackDown that to this day as you just learned from Kenny, I still get asked all about because yeah. people still wonder how was how was that planned? What did Vince know? How much was scripted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it still intrigues people to this day, which is the design of what they call the shoot promo. Shoot yeah. promos are not supposed to be, hey man, I know that your wife cheated on you and that uh -huh. your third kid ain't really your kid. <laughs> And people at home go, I don't give a shit. I want to see two guys fight. But if you make that promo something that people can, can feel in their hearts yep. and it strikes their passion, you know, the Bubba Ray Dudley always says, 
Strike a chord, man. Strike a chord on somebody and you'll sell a ticket. Yeah. You strike a chord and sell a ticket. And that's what we tried to do. And to Vince's credit, he took he took a a, a ferocious promo said to his face with some shit that a, I don't think a lot of people have ever said to him. Mm -hmm. um, and he took it so that he could draw money and yep. he didn't share a lot of that money with me when the, <laughs> when the buy rate came in because in his mind he probably thought oh, you got your payday by being able to say that to me yeah <laughs> yep that, that definitely sounds about right that definitely sounds about right vince was not about to share any of that payday <laughs> with with the guy that potentially even so more you know got more people to buy into uh, the whole uh, alliance versus WWF match um, at that year's Survivor Series, but this is just a testament to how great um, um, Paul Heyman is. It, he deserves to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, um, and this is just one of the plenty of reasons. There's been so many reasons why you can feel like he deserves to be there in the Hall of Fame. The guy knows wrestling. He knows wrestling in and out. He knows what stories are going to work. They literally aligned him with the Roman Reigns, and it worked. It worked. Them aligning him with Roman Reigns is a very big part of why we have the Roman Reigns we have now. Yes, he could have went heel, but he needed to align himself with someone that can talk him up even more and then kind of can coach him to find his voice now he doesn't even really need paul Heyman to talk him up talk himself up he's able to do it himself you can see the confidence and i'm sure paul Heyman helped with that it's fantastic that's why he deserves to be in the hall of fame so i definitely wanted to check this video out i've never really actually checked it out you know um i've you know seen this video pop up in my in my uh sub box for a long time well not in my sub box but in my recommended uh, videos i just never actually took time to watch it but i did see the original promo saving i've seen it a few times it's, it's really great so comment down below let me know your favorite paul Heyman promo or paul Heyman moment let me know down below but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm still getting speedy youtube rest of the champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace